Uh, MAFI is commercially available. Uh, yeah, if, yeah, if, if our, until we prove its efficacy and uh, yeah, if a lot of vaccines are still in the development phase itself, until we prove safety and then efficacy, but they can show enough where is going to be placed itself. Yeah. Definitely, if it's uh, it becomes safe and efficacy, it's probably going to replace BCG. But how how effective it is? It's not easy uh, proving. Uh, yeah, and you have to give it to large people of population and yeah, have in uh, uh, a population with a lot of TB to see if, if how effective it is. The problem is actually you cannot use uh, markers. Yeah, and you must say, yeah, and, yeah. For regular vaccines, mesen you can measure because also the you know, TB is actually a T cell uh, dependent uh, disease. For the other bacterial vaccines, you can get an idea about how efficacy from the antibody levels. And if it produces enough antibodies, then you can show some correlation between the antibody levels and the degree of, of protection. Uh, antibodies levels of the TB itself is not a good marker of, of immunity uh, because the immunity is cell-based, it's not actually humoral. So there's no surrogate, I mean, you cannot say, okay, I'll give it vaccine and it's immunogenic and it produces so much out but therefore it's going to be protective. You cannot do that. You cannot, it's not the same like with the other bacterial ones. Uh, Oh. Okay, side effects, actually, as I said, people who come to the vaccine, uh, to the clinic will see actually, uh, will see uh, some, a lot of local side effects. Sometimes the site, actually standard-wise, you usually give the vaccine in the left shoulder, and, uh, and that's why uh, we, nobody gives it on the right. This is sort of standard setting. So actually, if you want to look whether somebody had vaccine, is sometimes to look at the babies, to look for a scar, and that's on the life. Well, actually, it is actually uh, given interdermally on the left shoulder itself. And sometimes, actually, if it's not given properly, or in some if the strain is a bit virulent, and that's the, another problem of the vaccine because you cannot actually control the virulence of the strains very accurately. Therefore, you may get a local reaction itself and be significant enough to produce even local ulcerations itself, uh, as if it's local abscess even. Now, in addition to that, you may get local lymph nodes actually enlarged, local adenopathy. Classically, it is actually one to two months after the vaccine. And this is a cell mediated, it's not a human mediated, for therefore the de delayed is a delayed hypersensitivity reaction. So, so you may get, uh, and the incubation period is about two months. So you may s see the lymph nodes enlarged, but not immediately at birth. Actually, if it's immediately, there's something else going on. But if it's one or two months, then that's usually from the vaccine itself. And it stays big, and you may get even ulceration and so forth, and, and uh, like an abscess or it stays like that big and then disappears after a few more, maybe by the end of the first year it disappears, and depending on the phase. So that is a very, we're seeing it almost more in the past few years actually. I don't know why, but actually we're seeing more of these side effects itself. But that's one thing that actually uh, you might see it. So if you have a localized lymphadenopathy in a, in a, a small baby, one of the, uh, on the left side, and one of the differential diagnoses is BCG, uh, and we call it BCG adenitis itself. Now that it's, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, the other thing that probably I need to, uh, what if actually BCG is delayed and not given at birth itself? Can it be given later on? Yes, give me a little bit, but usually when, when you're not getting vaccine. Generally speaking, when you're giving vaccine, uh, you need to wait for actually if you give it either you give them all together if it's safe I mean or if you want to give it in sequence you should wait for at least four weeks between vaccination uh, here I mean every two months that's reasonable but uh, it shouldn't be less than four weeks uh, in general I mean uh, you not give a vaccine and next week you give another vaccine and another week no, we don't do that no you have to wait for four weeks itself so in a sense, we, we, if, we, if you miss the BCG vaccine, because that question we get answered a lot, uh, ask a lot, because a lot of 
people coming back from abroad and they haven't had the BCG vaccine. So we wait actually till they finish the primary vaccination and then we give the BCG. But at that time, if you're going to give BCG later than two months or in some actually uh, ID people say after six months, then you should do a PPD skin test. Uh, that's the whole point I wanted to make. If you're going to give uh, BCG to an older person, you should do a PPD skin first to make sure that he's not been exposed to the TB uh, bacillus itself. Because if he's exposed, you're going to get a very violent reaction itself. So you should do a PPD skin test. If it's negative, you give the vaccine. If it's positive, you should not give the vaccine. Hepatitis. Hepatitis B is actually is given also with the uh, 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 at birth. And also given, uh, but actually the, the main sequence of it is at two, four, and six. It's a three doses, uh, uh, a three dose schedule. It's a killed viral vaccine. Uh, it is basically to protect against hepatitis B. A lot of people will say, well, children will not get exposed to blood a lot. Actually, it's basically to catch people at birth to protect them as adults, as for like you. You took all, I think, hepatitis B vaccine for because you're gonna be exposed to a lot of patients with blood and or hepatitis take blood and so forth. And so it's basically the selective, in the past actually uh, abroad, they used to use selective vaccinations to adults, for example, and it failed. So they decided, they started mass vaccination in children before even North America actually. And they found our way is effective, more effective in catching everybody instead of just selecting adult people. All vaccination programs who target adults only usually tends to fail. I mean, because you cannot catch everybody who's susceptible to stuff. And so they use infants, children, because you can catch them maybe when they're born or when they go into school or something like that. You can catch children that way itself, in a sense, and you vaccinate everybody. So that's why hepatitis B is basically to catch them while the children so to pack it as an adult. It sometimes can be helpful for babies when the mother has actually hepatitis B. And that makes the vaccine of the, uh, of the uh, given at birth is very important. If it happens that the mother has also hepatitis B, so in addition to the vaccine, you should give the immune globulin to the baby too. So that's the only thing. It's a generally safe vaccine. Uh, it's a three do dose one, you can give it at one, Zero, one, uh, the initial study was zero one is at, at one and then one month later and then after six months. Or like with the vaccination, zero, uh, you can give it one month and one month and one month. Or we're giving here uh, two months, two months, two months. It's all, uh, at least three doses should be given. And very minimal local reaction and, and, and no, no, usually no problems itself. And it's a very effective vaccine and, and safe vaccine itself. The polio vaccines, two vaccines, one oral, and one uh, injectable. The oral is a live attenuated one. Uh, and uh, the, the injectable is uh, the killed vaccine. In the past, the oral one used to be more effective than the killed vaccine. Nowadays, actually, the new versions of the killed vaccine are much more effective than that. Not only that, actually, the killed vaccine is now incorporated inside the other vaccines itself. So with one injection, you can give protection against multiple diseases itself. So the, the concern of giving an extra needle is not there itself because it's combined with others. And so a lot of countries have moved from the oral to the, uh, to the killed vaccine because it's more convenient. And the other thing too, oral is, as I said, live attenuated. So if you give it to somebody who's immunocompromised, you can get, come down with polio. And actually that used to happen sometimes in North America. Every year they used to have three or four cases of uh, 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 paralytic polio induced by the polio vaccine itself. Uh, and they said, well, it's not worth it. I mean, because they don't have polio over or in general. We're protecting against something. We're, the only polio we're getting is from the vaccine. So they moved from the oral to the injectable ones itself. Uh, in Saudi Arabia, almost we haven't had any polio probably in the past 10 years or more. And I think in the next few years, we're going to move from, actually we're starting to move. Now we're introducing injectable, uh, a combination of injectable and oral polio. But probably in a few more years, we'll just use the injectable one and we'll stop using oral polio. Uh, except maybe in mass vaccination. 
لانه ده it has a different purpose I mean when you give it to all babies and to the whole campaigns they have it here you're not using it really to protect as much as you want to kick out if you, you worry about a, a wild virus in your community you want to kick it out by introducing a, a vaccine virus itself the vaccine virus itself uh, because we know that this is actually the mode of transmission is uh, fe uh, oral fecal uh, transmission itself so if you take it to oral it gets excreted you excrete the poliovirus in the in the community so it actually it kicks out the uh, uh, wild virus or actually disease virus itself and so though that's the idea of the campaign is not actually try to catch everybody yeah, I mean, that's one uh, other objective itself so poly vaccines again uh, two vaccines yeah, they're, they're combined I mean we give them the IPV is given as part of the two, two four and six vaccines the hexa uh, the oral poly is given separately uh, usually we give them four doses usually around uh, the six and one year and then with the boosters itself uh, so somewhat late than it used to be before so this is the for the polio vaccine um, and the side effects from it Diphtheria and tetanus itself, you know diphtheria and, uh, and tetanus, and those who think that actually we don't have any diphtheria or tetanus we can visit actually sometimes the ICU uh, every now. In the past year we get at least, we had probably about last year one case of diphtheria and actually every few months we have a tetanus case, a neonatal tetanus in the uh, uh, communities which are not vaccinated, in Galil or Mukweza, some communities who are not vaccinated, or the mothers are not vaccinated at all because they're not actually, so uh, they don't have any official papers, so they're not vaccinated. And so we end by actually having uh, susceptible babies and susceptible mothers and then susceptible babies. And we're having ne still neonatal tetanus, which is actually shouldn't happen. Yeah, and, uh, because you can very easily protect against that itself. So diphtheria, uh, uh, tetanus, and pertussis. The key thing, m maybe the vaccine that we need to focus on is the pertussis vaccine. And the pertussis vaccine is actually uh, whooping cough. Uh, is uh, the disease that causes whooping cough itself. It's still around, and it can be actually quite severe. Uh, uh, and when it's around, actually, it can lead to pneumonias. And it as affects the CNS also, you can get uh, have with it some convulsions. And the more concern about it actually can lead to death sometimes because it affects small babies. And it makes the, if you've seen a case with pertussis itself and see how the mucus is very thickened and viscid and actually they come in with choking spells, coughing, coughing, coughing until they're blue in the face, they have cyanosis. And sometimes some of those, it either end by actually having uh, hypoxic spells, uh, brain uh, disease, any asphyxia, or actually from dying, from the choke, and so they can actually uh, cannot handle the secretions and they can suffocate and, and die. Uh, so it can be a very serious one. Uh, and so it's very important to, to protect against it. Now the vaccine used to be a whole cell vaccine. And it causes, used to cause, actually we used to teach this, the contraindications and the precautions. It actually, the vaccine itself had a lot of side effects itself. It, it, it reduces very high fever. And the fever in sense will produce convulsions, like febrile convulsion itself. Uh, it used to produce this sort of crying spells and the patient should cry for uh, um, unknown reasons for three or four hours. Uh, hypotonic spells, what we call it, uh, collapse episodes, for example, just sudden hypotonia and all that. So that is, there was some concern that actually giving the vaccine might lead to some kind of pertussis and cephalopathy, but we're not sure whether that actually exists or not. So anyway, so it, a lot of the side effects were CNS diseases and all that, and that's why it used to be avoided in, in any child who have an underlying CNS disorder. We said, do not give the pertussis vaccine until uh, the child gets older and we know that actually it doesn't, this is not related to pertussis itself. But anyway, we used to go into details about that, but now the vaccine is almost uh, yeah, and it changed. We, now we have the pertussis vaccines that we have is actually uh, the acellular one. 
it is, uh, it is less effective, but it's more safer than the vaccine itself. And so this is more of historical interest now, actually, to knowing. But this is something, if you happen to use uh, the old vaccine, then you should actually, before giving the vaccine, ask about their actions during the previous uh, uh, time that the patient was vaccinated, and whether he had any of these. And if he had any of these, very high fever, convulsions, uh, crying spells, uh, uh, hyp hypotonic spells, whatever, uh, then you should either avoid or delay giving the vaccine itself. Hemophilus influenza vaccine is, again, part of the incorporated in the HEXA vaccine, uh, so it's not isolated. Uh, and Haemophilus influenza, you know the three encapsulated organisms that causes a lot of infections in children. You should remember those who were three bacteria. Hemophilus, strep pneumonia, and Neisseria meningitis. And we have vaccines now for against all three. So Haemophilus, uh, and these are all, tend to be, these are uh, killed vaccines uh, taken from the polysaccharide, the outer lining of the bacteria itself. They're very safe vaccines in general and very minimal side effects of it. Uh, it does, very rarely does it produce high fever and local reactions are minimal itself, so it's, they are, tend to be safe vaccines. So, uh, and they're quite effective vaccines. Haemophilus influenza uh, has, among all three vaccines, actually Haemophilus influenza vaccine is the most effective one because it's only one strain. Hemophilus of first type B, so uh, in a sense, it, it's protect, once you protect it against it, you almost don't get the disease itself. And so that led to a drop in the number of cases of meningitis and epiglottitis uh, uh, dramatically itself. So it's uh, hemophilus, and it's already given as part of the uh, vex, uh, uh, hexa vaccine itself. Pneumococcal vaccine, the same thing. This is what we have is what we call the Prevnar. Uh, and, and now, pneumococcal vaccines are a bit different from Haemophilus because Haemophilus, I said, uh, there's only one strain of Haemophilus vaccine deliver, uh, that causes disease. With pneumococcal strep pneumonia, how many strains do you know of? Uh, serotypes or strains well, of microbiology. There's about 80. Those who produce illness in, children, in, in humans is about 30 or something like that. Now, we have an other type of pneumococcal vaccine, the whole pneumovax, protects against 23 strains. The, 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 the vaccine that we have for children is only protecting, it used to be seven, and now it's uh, one to nine, and now it's 13. Hatachuf will get a PCV 13, or P13. 13 is actually the number of serotypes covered by the vaccine itself. Not all 80, not all 30. So it's an effective vaccine, but, and that's why sometimes you may come with illness which is outside the scope of the vaccine itself. Like it's still effective vaccine itself. The other thing, difference about it is actually it's a separate vaccine. Yani Haemophilus is incorporated as part of the HEXA vaccine with others, but pneumococcus is a separate needle. Yani separate needle, uh, yani, Listen, we cannot combine it. Yani, we've combined hepatitis with hepatitis A with B. If you found vaccine, listen, more of them are not present. But the hemophilus is combined with diphtheria, tetanus, supertussis, and hepatitis B all in one vaccine. Or, yeah, so that makes it easier to give only one vac uh, vaccine instead of giving multiple injections yani, or something like that. So it's, uh, but it's given at the same time with hexa. You give one needle for six vaccines. With the other arm, you give the other uh, pneumococcal vaccine, and then they give the oral either rotavirus, as they can have two or four months, or oral polio uh, vaccines orally also. We have two orals, rotavirus vaccine or uh, polio vaccine. So uh, pneumococcal vaccine is quite, again, safe. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, an old slide. Okay, this. Rotavirus vaccine. This vaccine is an oral vaccine. Uh, it's given in the two and four months. It has to be given before six months. If you go beyond six months, you should not give the vaccine. We'll get to the about why, actually. But yeah, there's a big story for it. But actually, it's, it's, it's against what rotavirus is the cause of. 
diarrhea. I mean, so it's actually, and diarrhea can be cause, it's, it's actually causes a lot of uh, morbidity and uh, problems in, in, in the third world countries itself. And it's actually quite effective, actually. And, and so it helps to reduce the diarrheal burden in the community it's being used. The only problem with it is it's, it's a bit expensive. But otherwise, it is an effective vaccine, and the country decided to introduce it, and so it's given at four and six. If you give it, as I said, if, if the child comes late, then you should uh, not give it, just skip it itself. So they wrote a virus, uh, these two ones, uh, uh, wrote a tech, uh, I think we, uh, is, uh, what we, a uh, of minutes of it, wrote a Rix, the, the one villain, but actually some hospitals have the wrote a tech ones. So, the, but both are available and both are effective in a sense. Uh, one has a one serotype, but only have five valent, only yani five serotypes in it. This is how to give it. You don't know to know about the details about it, but the general rule, what I said is, if it goes above six months, you should avoid giving the vaccine. And uh, there's some concern about actually relation between this vaccine and intersusception. And maybe giving it up beyond six months of age increases your risk for intersusception. That's the basic uh, idea about that itself. But otherwise, it tends to be, uh, that was the reason why it was once introduced and withdrawn, but then it was reintroduced once again itself. So the only thing that you should probably remember for between rotavices, the link to intersusception. That's always a good uh, MCQ question. Now, uh, now we finished almost the uh, food. Anyway, uh, the those who are given in the first half of the first year of life of the baby. But now, at one year, actually, we give the MMR. This is measles, mumps, and rubella itself. Uh, it used to be given one dose. Then we started giving two doses. Actually, most of the countries give two doses. And if I'm lucky, about three doses even. Now, uh, in order to prove this effect, the first dose is given at usually one year of age. The second dose is usually given at uh, uh, before in, uh, going to school uh, at six uh, years of age itself. When of America introduced another uh, one dose somewhere in the booster, then you give another third dose itself just to be added protection itself because it seems that the virus, uh, they, you need two doses at least. The same thing with varicella. To, with, together with it, at one year, we give varicella vaccine and also at before entry of school itself. It is actually, uh, yeah, the same thing. It's a live attenuated vaccine, so therefore you should avoid giving it or be careful about giving it in patients who are immunocompromised itself. Now, uh, the other issue, not related to immune deficiency, but actually immune globulins, because uh, if, let's say, you give blood or uh, for the treatment, certainly the immune globulins, if you give immune globulins or blood, you should delay giving the vaccine because the antibodies in whatever you're giving can actually suppress the replication of the virus itself, and it makes it ineffective. Uh, so that is, uh, you know, uh, it's not a contraindication, well it's a, pro well, it's a contraindication, but it's a precaution, you can now always avoid, it's not that you're going to have a problem with it, but it's just not making the vaccine effective, I mean, so so you either, if, if you had blood transfusion, you should delay any live attenuate vaccines, uh, it varies about from three to, to nine months, depending on the blood or blood products that you're using itself. Now, side effects of the vaccine, now, it's the Cyvex, yani, if you notice, most of it is like the, the symptoms of the diseases that's supposed to protect, I mean, of measles itself. Measles is a disease with this uh, rash and fever, and so actually you, with the vaccine, you may get some um, uh, rash and fever. And then actually can sometimes look like actual measles itself. Uh, so that, but that's in a few number of cases itself. Now, side effects of uh, mumps or uh, measles can be encephalitis. So you can see encephalitis following the vaccine itself. But the, the rate varies. I mean, if, if in a measles vaccine, uh, measles illness itself, the rate of, uh, of encephalitis, for example, is one in 10,000. 
هنا في الـ في الـ في الفاكسين اس اولموست 1 ان 1 مليون دوزز افري 1 مليون دوز يو جيف ميبي 1 كيس اوف انكفلايتس سيلف اولسو اذر سايد افكتس ثرومبوسايتوبينيا سيلف اند سو فورث اي مين سو دي دي يو ماي جيت جوينت وي سو سم كيسز اوف جوينت سويلنج بس ذاتس وي سي 10 ذاتس يوزولي ان تشيلدرن وين وي يوز تو جيف ذا فاكسين وذا كان في بريطانيا in adolescent girls when uh, uh, they noticed they're getting some and uh, it's thought to be from the rubella component itself but giving it to children at the age of one year uh, tends we don't see this side effect itself as i said we saw it in uh, in adolescent girls and not in in babies itself so, so these are some of the side effects itself oh uh, فقط 